name starts with 710, started at 710 here for a long time. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the 10 After 7 podcast on YouTube, episode 30. I'm Michael Cody Stevenson, and today I'm joined by my good friend, Devin Raw. I think it's his fourth or fifth time on here, and it looks like he's coming straight out of a cave. What's up, dude? I was going to say, dude, this, I mean, I look fantastic, but it does look like a complete dark background, but I'm kind of digging. Is the internet connection a little better than the front room? Unfortunately, I have a, a Call of Duty addict as a roommate, so. Yeah, we got into it last week when I came over there about how obsessed those guys are with Warzone and they're nerds. Dude, if you're t you're above the age of 25 and all you talk about is when are we going to drop next, like you're a loser, dude. Yeah, and I mean, also though, have you you're cutting out, dude. You were just perfect when we when we did this. Unbelievable, dude. You're literally frozen on my screen. Are you frozen? You're legit frozen with your eyes closed. This is terrible. What did you say? You're oh, legit. now you're now you're freezing. Am I? Yeah. Yeah, for me. Oh my god, dude. You'd think by August now in 2020, the year it's been, that we could figure out Zoom. Well, I have figured out Zoom. I just probably need to get off spectrum. Fuck Spectrum if you're in Spectrum too. Anyways, on today's podcast, we're going to talk about the NBA. The NBA playoffs started this week. It's got a March Madness feel to it because we got games starting at 10 a.m. going through the night. Should we start backwards or should we start today, tonight? Obviously, the Lakers blowing out Portland Trailblazers in game two after losing game one. Let's start there. AD actually went off. I saw Caldwell Pope actually made a shot for the first time in his life. J.R. Smith got run. And LeBron only scored 10 points, and the Lakers still whooped that ass by 20 points, I think, 20-plus points. It was a complete blow. Wait, are you saying you were surprised by this? Uh, I was surprised by Caldwell Pope making a shot. Well, yeah, I guess. I mean, well, we, could go, we could go back. Were you surprised at all? And did you think Laker fans <clears throat> should have started to panic after that game one loss? It's Laker fans, dude. By the way, by the way, congratulations for making it through. I actually just saw a tweet. Uh, this is your guys' first playoff win since 2012. So how did how did you make it eight years? Which is that you, you think, okay? about it, think about it. That does seem like forever because you know the Lakers only missed the playoffs two times since Jerry Buss owned the team. I mean, that's insane. But I saw the tweet, Kobe dropped like 30-something versus KD, Westbrook, and Harden. That was the last win? That was the last time the Lakers – that was the last time the Lakers have won a playoff game. Yeah, I mean – So yeah. I'm, I'm glad you're okay. I can't believe you made it eight years. But, no, so this – so as far as this series goes, um, I mean, I'm not surprised at all. You guys have AD and LeBron. You have two of the top five players. I don't understand the first year in the first game. Why the hell did you guys not just put AD down low and have him go to work? That's exactly what I was. Saying. I don't get he that. Spent, he spent way too much time on the perimeter. It, it, I have it, no it, idea why. Why do you have the best low post player in the game and he's standing by the three point line? Not to mention late in that game when they could have still won, when you have two of their bigs were in foul trouble. So put him down on the block and draw a foul, and then who's going to be guarding AD? I didn't get that at all. I don't know why he was doing it. I don't know if it was because literally it's Danny coaching, Green, dude. Danny it has Green to be coaching. hit a shot. What? It has to be coaching. I don't even know. I, I thought they were just trying to make up by shooting threes because Danny Green wasn't doing anything. Caldwell Pope, I think, scored one point. Overall, they went five of 32 in that game. No, I mean, yeah, I, I see that, but also – Granted, I texted um, a uh, Damian Lillard gift to every Laker fan um, I knew the other night and got probably the most upset person was Bucky by far. I think, he just, I think he just responded, fuck you. What and gift? It, what? Oh, it was the gif of the Damian Lillard dancing. Did I not send it to you? No, I was sending everyone. Oh, because I, I think I thought it was a, your clipper year, so I didn't think to send it to you. But anyways, so I uh, sent it to all the Laker fans, but – at the end of the day, like, are the Blazers, like, a cool team that people like? A hundred percent. Do they have two guards who are fucking amazing? Yes. They're not that good of a team. Like, yeah, they can get hot, but, like, 
okay, this is actually a question I have for you. And I was wondering this tonight. You have, what's this, is this Gary Trent Jr.? Yeah. Duke. Gary so Trent Jr. he's guarding LeBron. Why are you not ISOing and having him just go to work every possession? That just doesn't make sense to me. Well, LeBron in his past, historically, LeBron in game ones fills out the situation. Like, he's never been really except, I think, 20 Fills seconds. out the situation. He's never lost a game one. Yeah, but he, he tries to see, and I think he tries to get other people involved. And I think he knew coming in that the Lakers supporting cast, probably not what a lot of people expected. I mean, Avery Crash. Bradley opted out, Rondo's out, and they had to pick up Dion Waiters and J.R. Smith who I think probably should get run because they can knock down shots. Cause at this point, Danny Green and Caldwell Pope can't. So he felt it out. I mean, he had a 2015 and 15 game and they couldn't win. I mean, he always, Lakers, he, always down. he always has that stat line though. He always has that stat line though. But not 2015, 15 and LeBron. I mean, let's face it. He could have gone for 30 plus and they could have won. He was being this, passive. This is my thing. I was trolling Laker fans, like saying like, Oh, this is going to be rough for you guys. At the end of the day, um, I don't know about Caldwell Pope, but at the end of the day, uh, Danny Green isn't going to be this cold, dude. He's not going to continue missing wide open threes. You saw him in the playoffs last year. He's cold right now. End of the day, dude, they are so much better than the Blazers. But my problem with this Laker team, and did you, you were working tonight, right? So you didn't watch the game? Tonight. I, well, I, it was on in the background. So they, they blew – obviously, it was never a game. They were just completely blowing out the Blazers, which they should. They should, they should have swept the Blazers. The, the problem I have is they're not going to win a championship, dude. Their role That's what I'm saying. You could get away with – players aren't good, good enough. enough. Yeah, you could, you could get away with not making shots against the Portland team, who, let's face it, they had to win, and they barely won those games to get into the play-in. I mean, they beat the Nets barely. No, and, and everyone was talking about like, oh, look at how hot the Blazers are. But dude, you realize they were playing for their life every game. And they, like you were saying, they barely won every game. Yeah, against teams that were also fighting for their lives. Exactly. So at the end of the day, the Lakers are obviously going to easily surpass the Blazers. But my takeaway from at least watching these last two games is, to, granted, the Clippers lost to the Mavs. I didn't really watch much of last game. That's whatever. In my opinion, in general, this bubble is like, it, it's, I don't even know how to judge it. Like, I feel like I, wa I, I have it on. First of all, person who hated the bubble at first, it is so sick, especially working from home now, to be having playoff basketball from 10 a.m. to 9 a or 9 p.m. Like, literally all day is awesome. I think that concept is sick. But it's, dude, they're I can't get over the fact they're playing in an open gym, dude. It's not real NBA basketball. I think the, uh, you're seeing a lot of these guys play to their full potential, though. I, it has to do with the crowd. They always have said in the history of the league that road uh, role players play better when they're at home as opposed to the road. So, yeah, so, what's, the, so what's up with the Lakers role players then? <laughs> I don't think they have good enough role players. We can exactly. talk about this back and forth. Like tonight – we talked about AD at the beginning. Tonight he had 21 in the first half. and He's an absolute beast. By yeah. the way. Six, 16 of those were in the paint. It's going to have to come to LeBron and AD are going to have to play out of this world. Like no, next, next, next round, I even think next round against Houston. Uh, I mean, Houston could score. They're 20 I mean, in OKC. But when you get into the Clipper series, that's when they do have a LeBron stopper. See, throw Paul George, that's when it's going to get interesting. But for exactly. now, I think game one, it was a wash. They lost. I, if Portland was going to win anything, they were going to get one, maybe two. And I didn't think they should have panicked. And the Lakers, obviously, they everyone's been talking about it. They have a switch, and they flipped it in game two. How, yeah, how they end, going forward? I don't know. No, at the end, of, I, going forward, I really don't see it. But, yeah, they're going to easily win this series. At the end of the day, first of all, I saw LeBron on Gary Trent and good night. I don't – like, that's just ridiculous that that – that matchup is even happening and second of all like the, i still don't understand their decision to not just post up why why is ad not just going to the lower block and just catching the ball every possession i would do that i listened to a few podcasts this week and they did bring up what you brought up they're like does frank vogel is it frank vogel or does he just trust anthony davis to figure it out himself what what's happening there but i think at some point like even lebron you're the coach on the court like Say, AD, go to the block. I'll throw it into you. Literally, it's, like, it's the same issue. Watch it and with, they, uh, they do that and it works. It's the same issue with uh, 
the Sixers and Embiid. Embiid, when he's down low, can easily dominate a game. But for some reason, he kind of just floats to the outside on the perimeter. You know, honestly, I was thinking about that today. Um, just because, like, obviously when we, we grew up, like, usually, you know, you're big men. Like, if you're going to be winning an NBA championship, you have to have a big man or at least go to the finals. And it's gotten so much away from that to, like, where – I don't know if this is the Warriors, but just three-point shooting in general, like you're seeing across the NBA. Like, why do big men now feel like they have to have a three ball? Because I think I think I, most, I, don't, I think most teams stretch the floor. But, like a, big but man, a big man can't even stay on the floor for a seven-game series. Like you saw it a couple times in the past with Cantor. You've seen it with uh, I think Capella got ran off the court a couple of times, even though he's a more athletic big, but. Just having your big, you pull them away from the basket, and that happens every time. No, I'm fine with them being able to shoot threes and hit them occasionally, but, like, in a series like this, and, like, no shade to uh, the Blazers big men, but, like, dude, I'm if I'm Frank Vogel, throw Anthony Davis in the block literally every possession, I want him in the low block and at least touch the ball. Why would you not do that? No, they should. And I they obviously did it tonight and they did. And they got it they won by forty. So they just tied one one now. So let's jump to the series before the other one seed, the Bucks. I've been sound my, my magic. And see, magic. They were plus thirteen in that first game on Tuesday. And the magic led and beat the Bucks. They beat the brakes off of them. But here's why. That's another game one that you could have thrown it away and said that's a wash. Magic got one. How disrespectful is it that the NBA put a one seed, apparently your star player, Giannis, at a 10.30 a.m. start? What was the, Tuesday. That's why the, I, I seriously think the Bucks couldn't get up for that game. No, but it, man, no one for, for them, it's 1.30, right? It's yeah, East Coast. but still, that's the earliest game. That sucks. That's a slap in the face of the Bucks. How do how do they decide who the scheduling? So every year there is, and it's usually the Eastern Conference. It's usually they throw it's we people used to call it the NBA TV series. Like if you're on NBA TV during the playoffs, that's a trash ass series. Yeah, but if you're the one seed and you have arguably the best player in the league, yeah, it still works that way. But I mean, the Bucks clearly were affected by it because the Magic whooped that. So do you think this is just a bias again then because uh, Boston got prime time, didn't they? Yeah, Boston, Philly. And those are, I mean, two big markets. Like Orlando just isn't a draw at all. Well, totally. and, and I mean, that team is just like, I was looking at their roster and I know I made the hot take that like, just because I think this bubble's a joke that the Bucks are going to lose, which after watching today's game, there's absolutely no chance they lose this series. The Magic's roster is ass. I, I mean, yeah, they haven't been relevant since Dwight Howard, I think. I mean, like – give, hey, give it up for the best USC basketball player right now. It's got to be Vucevic. He's a they, monster. They, they actually brought that up in the broadcast when I was watching today. No, DeRozan for oh, sure. No, I thought about this. But, dude, Vucevic is, like, giving it to him. I, I will say, dude, he is such a, a skilled big man. It's insane. Like, he's – I remember him at SC, but I didn't think you – know, obviously, SC hasn't had guys for a while, so I didn't think – No, he, totally. I thought the same thing. Like, I remember when he was at SC, but I thought he was just another dude, and now he's, like, an NBA all-star. But I, I still, like, I don't know. I watched the game today, and I just can't get over. What happened to Mark Helfoltz? Oh, that – well, that's another oh, one. That's actually, he's, it's, he's a good story. Fine. Yeah. Yeah, it's awesome. So what happened in Philly, dude? I, I mean, I mean, I've heard of getting the yips and stuff in baseball. I know pitchers get that where they can't throw the first base. But when have you ever heard of an NBA player not all of a sudden they can't shoot? It is one of the most interesting stories. Like that can be a 30, 30 for thirty for thirty in itself. But what happened to him? Uh, I I don't know. Like, like there were those videos that were circulating on Twitter of like him airballing free throws, and then I think he tried to like switch up his shot completely it's just so weird to me and i'll never i like you said i wish they'd do some investigating philly kind of handled philly kind of handled it shitty putting it always in public though too yeah and i mean they were tanking but like at the but that's fine like you you see star players go to shitty teams in the nba and a team sucks but the players still like they're like damn if he had something around him he'd be good he legitly forgot how to shoot a basketball 
Yeah, and they passed on Jason Tatum to take Fultz. So Philly should be slapping themselves in the face. But also, though, didn't they uh, – oh, no, actually, who did they trade Fultz for? I think Philly got, like, a decent – maybe not. Maybe I'm tripping. They did trade him, though, and get someone. Was it a pick? Maybe it was nothing. I don't know. He's a first-rounder. I mean, you better yeah, start to go back, you would think. But maybe – they maybe his stock fell so low because no one even knew if he could take a jump shot. But getting back to the Bucks, yes, Giannis is a monster. I actually love Giannis. I, I like know, him too a lot. Like, he's just a gamer. That's why I love him. He's mm-hmm. always chirping, got suspended in the bubble for headbutting a guy. Uh, other than that, though, this is why I haven't liked the Bucks. I don't trust Eric Bledsoe. I think why? I don't. And E. Bled used to be my guy when he was a bench player for the Clippers when he came up. But now him as a point guard and him just I, – I stopped liking him. Remember when him and Terry Rozier got into it in the playoffs? Like last year or two years ago, right? Two years ago. They were chirping yeah. each other, and I was like, dude, like, come on, bless So him. this is my problem with the Bucks and why I – And he thinks he's, he thinks he's a guy. I no, know. I know. And, and he's a really good player, don't get me wrong. But this is my problem with the Bucks is like, do they have Giannis and he is he like a – generational player 100 percent. he's a matchup nightmare but like dude like what you're saying Bledsoe can't he's a dog that is your sixth man right like he can't be like I it does, I know he starts sometimes maybe not all the time no, he's, their, he's their starter oh does he start over George Hill it's it's another thing though like if you if you stop Giannis how much trust do you have in the other guys and honestly they've as much as I've been down on the Bucks, it's like a Dwight Howard situation in Orlando when they built around Dwight just a bunch of shooters. Because, I mean, they have Chris Middleton. Who's been broke in this play. Yeah, he's been broke, but he's, he's an all-star. Well, they lost Brogdon. They, lo- they lost Brogdon. He's an indie. Uh, Brooke Lopez, though, he turned into a three-point shooter. Kyle Korver, one of the best shooters of all time. Korver, uh, DiVincenzo. I, apparently, a lot of talk, they've, they're playing too many guys. They're going to have to shorten their rotation but I think they it's really just going to come down to do you take their role players over the other ones and can Giannis get off I mean we've seen teams try to defend them when they build that wall inside the paint but there's only so much you can do with that but in the east let's jump to the other series because I I'm a huge fan and I think we talked about it on two my heat yeah. my no, heat I'm, I'm not still not a Jimmy Butler guy uh I'm a, I'm a Raptors guy dude Dude, kind of sick. They're such a weird team to me because you know what they are. It's like so crazy, and you just hate. To see, they are just they are a team, dude. No stars. Everyone knows their role, and their role players are so like they're not even they're they're they were role players when Kawhi was there, but now they're the guys. Like Fred Van Vliet is a fucking G. Okay. The fact that that guy is legitly a star in the NBA. Allen. He's killing it. Unre- Someone said today, I forgot who it was, that they said the Raptors have the best guards in the NBA, which I disagree with. But uh, Yeah, I, I wouldn't count on Lowry. But the, the crazy thing is about that team is it's just like they're so well-rounded. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it, and, and by all accounts, a lot of people say they have the best coach in Nick Nurse. So. I, 100, I, I, will, I will 100% call this right now, not that it's like any big thing. If the Bucks see the Raptors, yeah. the Raptors are beating that ass. I agree. Because I you're going to – they are going to whoop that ass. I'm trying to think. They have, they have dudes to throw at Giannis. Like, they'll throw yeah. – and they need scoring out of Siakam, but they got uh, – And Siakam on him. Ananobi, uh, Ibaka's even athletic. But Ibaka, yeah. I mean, and Ibaka, you're not even relying him to score. I mean, like you said, they're a fucking team. Like, they were together last year, and I actually heard this recently, that, yes, they lost Kawhi Leonard, but Kawhi's DNA is still on that team. Well, and and, and Danny Green, who was a big part of them. Yeah. But I, I, I love that team, and I agree with you. If it was Bucks raptors I would probably take the Buc- or Raptors because those guys had already been there. I think they have the better coach. It, it's the is, is it not like the Would you even like, would you let would you let Giannis go off? Like would you, you say mean? you uh, let Giannis beat me and then like guard the other shooters? Like focus nah, on the other guys? Nah, I'm well, this is what I'm gonna do because for some reason I had this weird like 
maybe I just watched a few highlights and I was like, damn, Giannis can hit, can consistently hit a three. Not true. He yeah. cannot. He no. cannot. So what you just need to do is just keep him out of the paint. And then, yeah, anytime he goes to the paint, you throw a double and let someone else beat you. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I would, that's, that's probably the most interesting uh, matchup of the East. I still like the Celtics, but we're going to jump on to the other series that happened today. OKC, Houston. I actually, I went to a brewery and the guy was like, yeah, did you see Porzingis get uh, thrown out of the game last night? I bet it. I was riding the Mavericks all year, and I was like, "You got any? Uh, you got any tips for OKC uh, Houston?" And he's like, "Man, I'm really feeling OKC." And this was Game One, and they got how it. drunk was this guy? Probably drunk. He worked at a brewery, and he was giving out free beers. So I'm I'm guessing he was drunk. Okay. But yeah, he, he told me and Dill about OKC uh, minus. I think they were favored minus. And let me guess. You listen to him. You always have. In, you always think that like if some random guy comes up to you at a bar, it's like, like oh, this is like fate well shit i'll take any tips at this point because i can't win anything but yeah we took that one and houston blew out okc in game one it was a little closer today in game two i think harden had a bad game and houston today he couldn't hit shit for three and russell westbrook i just didn't didn't play play he was on the bench but houston's up 2-0 i don't know how you feel about the rockets but they're doing something right i said they were a sneaky pick to do it all i just It'll be nuts if they win a freaking NBA championship no. without a center. I refuse. I refuse. Okay, so th- they'll go off some games. Don't get me wrong. And uh, Harden, Westbrook, like that's just a ridiculous freaking guards to have on your squad. But like, and Mike D'Antoni team will never win an NBA championship. You heard it here first. Never. You think? I'm hearing rumblings that he might go coach Zion and them boys. What? You have inside sources in the NBA? Yeah. Oh, some guy came up to you at your brewery? Yeah. Right. <laughs> rumblings, dude. Rumblings. But, that, guy, that guy also that talked me into OKC, talked me into getting a triple IPA. And, oh, um, so no wonder you thought this. Yeah. So I was, I was drinking heavily. Game dude, over. but what I'm saying is, and you have to agree with me, like, at the end of the day, like, yeah, let's score a ton of points and we'll shit on all these, like, shitty teams and maybe we'll go cold and lose a game. But, like, dude, when they meet, the like, LeBron and AD, like, teams are going to be Ding you up and they're going to be playing no D. And that was the first – that was the first uh, – when they first traded Capella and wanted to do this – Why did they do that, by the way? Just this experiment of, like, let's go small ball? Yeah, Daryl Morey, GM of that team, just – He's the one that created this. Wasn't he the same one who said something about China? That guy has terrible decision making. Yeah. But, um, yeah, he just, wanted to do, he just wanted to do the three and D thing. And the first game they played after trading Capella was against the Lakers. And they beat the Lakers, but that's one game. And a seven-game oh. series, like, AD should probably average 50 points in the next series when they play the Rockets. That's what I'm saying. Like, it, who's who are they going to put on AD? Is Harden going to guard AD? I mean, one of my favorite players in the NBA, PJ Tucker, is gonna throw himself at him. Why? He's he's a great defensive player. That, but that's their guy. Like they'll. Oh, throw. so you guys, you're gonna have a six-seven dude guarding. You know what's crazy though? I think Tyson Chandler's on their team on the bench, but never plays. There is no way. Is he still in the league? Yeah. You know who else? There's a lot of dudes in this bubble that I didn't even know were in the league. There was I'm, someone I'm name off a couple t- uh, right now. So yesterday, Clippers, Mavericks. Trey Burke was going off. Dude, I totally didn't know he was on the Mavs. And he was out of the league and I think had a cup of coffee with the Knicks and the Mavs. Dude, I will never forget that time that we were visiting music. Music in Northwood. And Trey Burke. And it's so crazy to me also, and this also could be bias and bad, but like there's always those guys in March Madness that you'll never forget and he's one of them. That's why I literally, I'm not even kidding. I want to create a podcast. Dan Patrick has this thing called The Next Great Podcast. I literally want to create a podcast of just college athletes that you will never forget. Because Trey oh, Burks, Trey Burks in there for sure. Trey Burks in there. Tate Forcier. Uh, dude, speak, uh, dude. Uh, like shout Denar, out to Den- Denar yeah. Robinson. Like all these guys. Yeah, and I mean, yeah. Like my favorite crazy. thing in sports is where are they now? Like I would love to have a podcast where I interview these people. Devin Devendorf. What's his name? Oh, from Syracuse. Devendorf. Syracuse. Like, yeah. Six overtime game. The white boy. Yeah. Where is Johnny Flynn? 
Johnny Flint. See, that's well, everyone knows him because the Timberwolves fucking passed on Steph Curry and took Johnny. But Flint. like, you, no, but I'm just saying, like, you could just do a podcast just on March Madness yeah. here. It would be great. That's why I literally it's due next week and I might even change it. I was going to do uh, the names you've never heard, but the names you have heard, but never forget. The heard. names you have heard, but where the fuck are they? Yeah. And never forget. Like seriously, March Madness, those guys get brought up all the time. But anyway, Dude, that's such a good idea. Anyway, we're, sidebar. We're, we're talking about uh, the Rockets. Yeah. I don't, I, I don't know. They probably, they can't do it. I'm not buying any <laughs> stock in the Rockets. Yeah. dude. And then the other game today, who started? What did I? What, oh, my favorite. Wait, was that today? Dude, are you losing track of time, dude? The Monday, like I don't know what four games are playing today. So I love that though. Every other day, it's. Four I know it's fucking beautiful, today. but you know it's gonna change after the first round. Who um, did play today? I even. Oh, my favorite, dude! I love this series. It's the best series. Uh, Denver Nuggets and Utah Jazz. Why do you like this series? I, I love it because, dude, I, I love the Nuggets. And they're, that's another team. I Explain to me player. why. Me and you talked about it last year. We're like, dude, I don't know some of these dudes on this team. And usually me and you always say, like, in the NBA especially, you will know each guy where they went to college. If you're getting any, minutes. Yeah. I don't have any fucking clue who Terry Craig is. I don't, <laughs> I don't have a goddamn clue who Monte Morris is. <laughs> the so rolling dudes out there that are legit and game one was phenomenal went into overtime De- uh deb freaking uh mitchell scored 57 i think he was the fourth player ever to drop 50 plus in a and they lost game. right and they lost yeah and jamal murray and jokic took over in overtime i had money on that game i was stoked about that but this series it's one one conley returns after leaving because the birth of his kid and this is another debate. Would you do that, by the way? So, so Dylan was like, dude, all power to him. Good for him. I was like, how many kids? Does he have? I would say, first of all, how many kids does he have? Second of all, have you heard of fucking FaceTime, dude? FaceTime, yeah. We live in the era. Yeah. Like, sorry, like, although, I don't know. This is a debate I have, though. So what seed even are the Jazz? Like six? It's, it's three six. And I don't know. Who's so I'm sitting here and I'm like, if I'm the Jazz, I'm like, ah, eh, we're probably not even going to win it. No, out. but at the beginning of this season, the Jazz was the hot pick to even be the NBA champion. Were they? By who? Jazz fans? They added Bogdanovich, and they added Mike Conley. And Conley I didn't think Conley. everyone loved that guy so much, by the way. Who? Bogdanovich. Like, I didn't think he was that good, and then I – He got for them, though. No, that's what I'm saying. And then uh, they, I heard interviews like, oh, they're down Bogdanovich. And I was like, who gives a fuck? Shooter, though. We know how much shooting means. The Lakers yeah, that's true. You I like, this, you like this series? Why? Just because they're so evenly matched? I think they're evenly matched. And I think they do. Another guy, the Nuggets, Michael Porter Jr. I remember him. He had the back problem. Dude, crazy. The Nuggets, the Nuggets took a flyer on him. He was supposed to be the number one pick. I think he dropped to 14. And that is six foot ten. And I'm not comparing him to Durant, but the way he steps into Dude. three, I think he can get a shot off over anyone no he's not Durant but I'm just saying the fact that he can no, know he's he's a ball and player and he has a stroke dude like that jumper is pure no he looks good for sure and I remember when he came back didn't uh Missouri right yeah didn't he come back for the tournament like played like one game and he looked no, I, don't think so. I thought they sat him out I think he came back for one game and he just looked terrible. And I was like, damn, there's a goes another guy to a knee injury. But shit, he has came back. But speaking of Murray, I love Murray too. He's a shooter at Kentucky. You knew like right away, this guy can shoot the basketball. He's going to be good in the NBA. Uh, Jokic is just blows my mind how good he is. And you even were like, hey, this guy plays point guard. I'm like, yeah, dude, they literally run the offense through him. Um, but here's a question for you. What tandem would you take Donovan Mitchell, Rudy Gobert, Doncic, Porzingis, Murray, Jokic? You can throw some others in there if you want. Uh, as far as like a big and small, or I'll, I'll even not even big and small. Dude, I'll, I'll, give you, take, I'll give you Tatum and Jalen uh, Jalen Brown too. No, no, I don't want that one. A hundred percent. I'm in. Fuck. This has been my thing: is that I fucking hate Euro players. Being a Kings fan. But, dude, Doncic and Porzingis are sick, dude. And Doncic is another guy just like uh, Giannis. Like, he's not taking shit from anyone. Dude, they are sick. But 
Yeah, I would take it. I like go. I like go bear. He does a few things, you know. I like shots and dunk the basketball. I agree with you with that. I will. I lost all respect for Go Bear when he cried and he didn't make the All Star team. Done. <laughs> I don't care how many defense. I thought, you, I, thought you, I thought you were gonna bring up COVID, and I was gonna be like, dude, don't go there. Oh no, I'm fine with him joking about that. I mean, he didn't know the the severity of what was going on and all the the things in the media about that. Yeah. Donovan Mitchell like didn't like him and wanted him traded because of that. Like, dude, no one knew what COVID was then. Like. Dude, dude, I don't- I know, I know he just dropped 57, but can Mitchell be the best player on the finals team? I know he's young. I Dude, always, any, anyone who drops 57 can be. You think? Yeah. Anyone who's uh, – granted, it's in the bubble, dude. See, this is the thing. You have to take any bubble game with a grain of salt. But – 57 and lost. But, dude, uh, yeah, the, you, I like him. Side note, um, love the Nuggets, not because they're team – God damn, the Kings are the biggest botch artist. Mike Malone, Malone, dude. That guy is a fucking – DeMarcus Cousins, who has hated every coach he's ever had his entire life, liked Mike Malone. Like, that's all I need to know. He was devastated when we got rid of – when we fired him. Yeah, he still wouldn't work in Denver. It, is Denver a team that you could think? Like, how do they match up with the Lakers? I think we're just going to compare every team against the Lakers. I know, right? Uh, Match up better than probably anyone else, but still lose. They just it, dude. At the end of the day, like we're in the we're the NBA. It's not any other league. It's it's Joe star- get, go get your first AD would be sick though. That would be a good matchup, but it's star power, dude. Okay, so you have Jokic on AD, and then who guards LeBron? Michael Porter, six foot ten. Uh, yeah, he gets abused. He's a rookie. Right, just basically a rookie. This is, this is all I'm saying is that at the end of the day, the NBA we're at a point. Usually, besides last year, usually the best fucking player wins. Exactly. Like if you have the best, if you have the best player going to the finals, if you have the best, like, like Lakers, they have the best two two players in, in at least in the top five, right? If they Davis and LeBron are top five players, you're probably going to win a championship. So Although to- the Clipper, the Clippers will. I like the Clippers beating the Lakers only because. They have two top ten players, and their role players are way better than the Lakers. Yeah, AD might average forty, or he might have to average fifty in that series. No one can guard him. Absolutely no one. Um, also, yeah. really quick though, you didn't watch the game tonight. Am I new to this? And I, I granted, this is the NBA in general. LeBron bitches every time down the floor. Yeah, dude, it's every player though. It's every player. LeBron. It, Yes, he does, but it's every single player. Everyone tries to say this. It's every single player. Yeah, yeah. that's probably true. Nuggets or Jazz, who would you take? Um, hmm. Dude, I really think it's a toss-up. If I would have to pick, I would probably say the Nuggets because I just I, – I think Mike Malone is a fucking great coach. Yeah, Quinn Sanders is a coach too on Utah side, but I, I really don't know. It is a toss-up from game to game. It, they honestly might just trade wins back and forth. No, I wouldn't. I I don't think I could. As far as betting goes, I'm staying far the fuck away from that. So we talked about Toronto. They're going to roll through the nets. I don't – Karis LeVert and a bunch of – literally just – they got a team together on the fly. It's like – <laughs> That just ran out of kids. That next team, man. Yeah. Talk yeah. about it. Talk about a team where you're ch- you go through their roster and try to figure out what college they went to. Jesus. Yeah. Harris LeVert, Michigan. That's all I know. So we know that one. Bucks. We said they're going to roll through the Magic after losing Game One. Philly Celtics. Celtics up 2-0. Celtics are about to absolutely kill off the Sixers. Rep Brown is getting fired. Yeah. Uh, he was going to coach there. Uh, ben Simmons out with his knee injury. It's been Embiid. Embiid is good, but like I said, he floats out. He can be so dominant, but that team just, they don't have it, and the Celtics are going to kill him off. They might trade a guy. I definitely think Brett Brown, he's not surviving. So that series, if it doesn't end in four, it'll end in five. I love Jason Tatum. I love Jalen Brown. I love Kemba Walker. I think the Celtics have a say in the East. Oh, totally. Well, they're, they're another prime example of like, they're just like a team. I mean, yeah, I guess you can say Jason Tatum is their star, but they, they just are a well-rounded team. They're the, they're the only team that has three guys averaging over 20 points. Unfortunately for them, though, how long is Gordon Hayward out? Four weeks. Has he had his kid yet? I know that's a thing we have to say. 
I don't know. Is it a boy? Did he leave the bubble? No, he was about to have another kid, so he no. said he was going to. Is it a boy? Because he was devastated last. No, time. I think this is the girl that he was devastated about. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. But four weeks. Yeah. Um, Speaking of that, I mean, I know that's old. So, say you set up that thing and he has that reaction, like, don't post that video. Dude. No, yeah, that's bad. Uh, was it his wife? It was it? Yeah, it was probably his wife. Or they thought it was funny. Um, the last East series is. Um, it's my heat. Oh, heat. My heat. Yeah, I'm going to keep saying it. And I kind of want to like him because he is like that's another like they are for sure following and running through a brick wall for jimmy butler i just don't like the way he ended things in minnesota dude why are you so against jay because i heard because dude he had an interview rachel nichols literally flew from la to do by the, the way do they have something going on rachel nichols is married right well, stop. yes okay uh, well uh but she flew from la to minnesota that same day that he had his practice where he was playing with the second team and scored every bucket, or actually maybe I think he passed every time and didn't score and beat Carl Anthony and Wiggins. And maybe they were little bitches, but dude, come on. You had this interview set up so you could get out of there. Basically, this is his third team, okay? And usually that doesn't bode well when you're on your third team, unless you're LeBron James, you can go anywhere you want and win. So I like the Heat. Duncan Robinson, maybe my favorite player. He's undrafted. Dude, he, I did a deep dive on him. Do you know his background? Yeah, I know he went to a small school. And he went to a D3. He's the only player ever to go to a D3 for a year and then get a full ride to a D1. Oh, yeah, he's at Michigan and the coolest, coolest name in sports. Duncan. Yeah, Duncan is a pretty sick Oh, no, but think about it. You never even think about it. Just think about it for a minute. What, D-Rob? I think his dad was a Spurs fan. How sick is that, bro? Then, Wait, no way. I think about Twin it. Twin Towers? Yeah, Duncan Robinson. Like, that's one of the coolest sports You're names. just making things up. You get on Dan Patrick. I'll go back. Three weeks ago, he was on Dan Patrick. It's a good interview. And this I, man is from New York. His dad was not a fucking Spurs fan. Have you ever met a Spurs fan? Could have been. He could have been a big... Uh, Don't answer that. Have you ever met a Spurs fan? Ever. Kind of thing. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know what? You know what? I will say this. If you've ever ran into a foreign who now lives in the United States but moved here as a young kid or maybe in his teens or whatever, I worked with a guy who is, get this, he's a huge sports fan, so he moved here. I forgot where, maybe Ecuador, and he's a Patriots and Spurs fan. Why? I get Patriots like they're the dying. I, well, I guess the Spurs are, were always solid. <laughs> Yeah, they have the Patriots fan, and, well, yeah, it just makes sense to be a Spurs Yeah, fan. I guess that makes sense. Actually, isn't – um shit that chick that used to work for espn is a spurs fan randomly who used to do nba games summer Summer? Uh, no maybe not her name's not summer fuck i don't know the blonde girl that used to do some nba to, to oh uh, michelle beetle You're michelle good. beetle shit yeah she's a, she's the only spurs fan in the world yeah well. no and skip bayless all right anyways i no, i can't believe i mentioned that fucking guy's name on this podcast Anyways, uh, let's talk about this one to go final. Clippers. Dude, I can't focus when Eric walks out here in his freaking underwear, dude. He's always in his underwear. All right, let, let's finish on Clippers Mavs. Uh, do you think Mavs got a chance? Or I don't not? like talking about the Mavs, dude. You know this. I know. It's tough for you. But, hey, Kings have – they they're on the rise right now. Flotty D-Box stepped down and Paige has stepped down. So oh, sick. We have the oh, sick. We have the 12th pick, so we don't have to ruin someone's career. This so. draft is soft anyways. You don't have a top three sure. pick. You might sure. as well have a pick. Uh, do you think the Mavs have a chance? I would love to see Luca knock the. Have a chance to beat the Clippers. Get the fuck out of here. Luca is getting, dude. Luca is that guy. I love Luca. I will he, say he scored seventy points in his first two games. I, okay, sick. So in in the bubble, so asterisk. Forty-two points in his NBA playoff debut. Another record. He's breaking records every day, and it's so it, dude. He might be the most fascinating player to watch. It's 24-hour fitness to the totally. max. It's a guy, if you literally went to 24-hour fitness at 9 p.m. when their pickup time. Except he's yeah, took out the best player, took out the best white dude you could find, and shot him up with steroids. I was going to say, except he's six, like 10 or something. Yeah. So get the best white player and shoot him up with human growth hormone and Barry Bond steroids, and you get Luka Doncic. 
So the more I watch him, the more I'm just like, Jesus Christ, this guy's fucking unreal. But um, I have two things that, okay, one, obviously I just want to hate him because the Kings passed on him and could have totally transformed our franchise or he would have ruined his career. But the other thing is, do you ever have that bias where you go and see someone play live and that's all you think about? Yeah. When we, Patrick, when, your friend, Patrick Hollerup, who you live with uh, forever, thinks John Wall is the best basketball player of all time. <laughs> Thinks who? John Wall. He saw John Wall live once and he won't shut up. See, about it. see, so I have the opposite. When me and you went to uh, watch them, oh no, it wasn't me and you, it was me and Christian. Yeah. Me and Christian went and saw the Lakers play the Mavs. We were live. basically like six rows back too. We, when me and Christian were there? Yeah. Yeah, I know. We were like, six, the guy couldn't make a fucking bucket and look fat. And I oh, that way, I'm, I thought you were going the other way. You see a guy, no, he might he, pl- he played fucking terrible. And I was just like, see, dude, how is this guy? But it's like, dude, the more you watch him, it's just his his yeah, passing, cool. his passing more than anything is ridiculous. I hope they, I hope they take it to six or seven games. Like he is good enough. Like I said, I mean, they're relying on guys like Trey Burke, Tim Hardaway Jr. Just cast off. Who is Finney Smith or something? Who the I, fuck is it, that? I three times a game, at least three times a game, get them mixed up with Tim Hardaway Jr. The 10 and the Who 11. Is he? I think they're number 10 and number 11. And it looks the same. I don't know why, but I don't, I don't know. That's another guy. There's so many dudes in this bubble. Shout out to DJ Augustine. Been in the league for about. There's five. no way that guy's still playing. Starting point guard for the Magic. Been oh, there still in the Magic. 30 years. Uh, there's other guys who I'm just like blown away by in this league. Udonis Haslam? Still no. On the, on the bench in uniform. Please. He's yeah. on the Heat still? Yeah, 305. Dude, is, does that guy have a lifetime contract? Let's just say, if we're going to say anything on this podcast, for real, Pipple was no longer Mr. 305. Oh, dude. Oh, Haslam went to high school in Miami, right? No, I, I, dude, I know the whole Haslam story. At this point, when he does finally leave the team, they literally just have to have a statue and put it on the end of the bench. I don't think he's ever going to leave the team, dude. They're going to literally let him sit on the bench. Are they just going to let him be their 12th man for fucking a it's like when It's like when LeBron was in Miami and Jamon Howard was like slowly had his uniform on and then eventually went to his suit and became and then, a coach. Totally. But yeah. dude, do we, it's been so long. I don't even remember when he played uh yeah i can't remember the last time he played he's a he's fucking awesome though i love does he still have cornrows yeah no uh, he might have a shaved head steph curry has cornrows and i actually love him yeah like, he actually looks really good and actually but, i went on a deep dive. i don't know how you feel about this but uh first of all damian lillard recently is like turned into steph curry and i went on a a deep dive today on steph curry highlights holy fuck i know we only missed him for I think in the group chat uh, last night, they like forgot about Steph Curry. They were already talking about Bro, oh, dude, don't. I was like, damn, is Lillard the new Steph Curry? And then I went and watched Steph Curry highlights. There is no fucking Steph Curry. No shot. No shot. Uh, what other, I think we covered basically all we this. We covered stuff. basketball. The only baseball, uh, baseball news. I wanna, yeah, I want to talk about this though. So there's unwritten rules. And me and Dylan talk about it. And I like unwritten rules because they always start fights. Uh, literally always. And there's always really? a fight. So this week, Fernando Tatis, they were playing the Rangers. They were up seven, uh, 3-0 pitch. He swung, took it oppo, home run. And this is why, and I think, I don't know if this goes longer than 45 minutes on Zoom. I didn't pay for it. I hope it does. Uh, But this is why managers need to not wear uniforms. Because this is only a big deal because the Rangers manager, who was in a uniform, looked so upset. He's also the Dodgers uh, Third, or third base coach for the last three years, Chris Woodward. Who is it? He was the Dodgers' third base coach for the last three seasons. He's the manager for the Rangers. How does he look in a uni? What's his name? Uh, he's younger, so he looks like he could, like he's in his early 40s. He looks like a player. Yeah, uh, but this is my issue. The managers are the ones that make this an issue because they're the old school guys, and they say you can't swing on a 3-0 count. It's showing up your opponent when you're up by this amount of runs. So he says it. And then the problem is the Padres manager also agreed and said Tatis should have had a take sign and shouldn't have done it. And it's like, this guy's the best in the game. 3-0 pitch, like, every right to swing if it's right now. Uh, this is one I don't agree with. This is a shitty unwritten rule. You know me, dude. Unwritten rules are a fucking joke. 
you guys are professional athletes. There should be no sportsmanship in professional athletics. You guys are paid to entertain. Not to mention- yeah, but then, yeah, why do they take knees in football though? Because you just want to get the fuck out of there with the win. You don't want to risk doing anything stupid. <laughs> Injuries out there. Injuries or throwing a pick six or fumbling. That's why you do that. But anyways, dude, then who is the pitcher? Then don't fuck, don't fucking throw it down the middle then. Dude. Yeah, and I like how a lot of players, so these coaches came out with this and said Tatis, and I hate how Hosmer pulled Tatis aside and said I'll talk to him. Um, about what for hitting a fucking home run that's his that's job but a lot of pitchers trevor bauer he's become like the voice of the mlb i fucking love that guy by the way yeah i've, I've come full circle on him uh he came out and defended tatis so the only thing he did wrong was apologize another pitcher came out i forgot who it was maybe shane bieber said like Dude, this is the second time we we brought up shane bieber is that our guy he's a stud he's my guy uh but he came out and he said, that's one of the first things I look at. Like if a guy, his swing percentage on 3-0 pitches, like I'm not grooving one. If a guy swings 3-0, like I'm just not throwing it right But now. also explain this to me. Okay, so it's 3-0, sick. If you throw a hittable pitch, why should I let that go? I don't get that. Yeah, that's why I don't agree with this unwritten rule. You know what I do agree with? Unwritten rule. And it's always been one. And speaking of a 3-0 pitch, I didn't know this was a thing until – Two or three years ago, the Dodgers were playing the Miami Marlins, and we hit a home run on a 3-0 pitch. And I didn't even know. It wasn't a grand slam. Tatis was, was a grand slam, however you want to take it. But 3-0 pitch, Dodgers swung away, hit a homer. And then poor guy, I think he got called up maybe three days before. I forget his name. Um, but he got hit right in the ribs. And it was clearly oh, the guy after – yeah, the Dodger center fielder hit right in the Oh, ring. fuck that. What name was Eidner, Abner, something. I'm oh, so you're saying the guy after who doesn't abide by an under <laughs> rule is the one who gets punished. Yeah, so in the Padres game, when, after Tatis hit it, Manny Machado got a ball thrown right behind him. But the Dodger guy took a shot to the ribs. Next any, and that's why I fucking love Ross Stripling, leadoff hitter is Giancarlo Stanton. And first, Great guy, though. First pitch – Stripling throws a fucking ball same way, right fastball right behind him to say, "Hey!" And Stanton fucking took his bat and said, "What the fuck's up?" A uh, brawl started. Have back. you seen Stanton, dude? Yeah, he's a monster. Yeah. He turned too much for me, but yeah, it started a huge brawl. But Stripling was even like, "Dude, you're gonna throw at us when we're up, like, because we swung at a three zero pitch." But an unwritten rule I do agree with, and I think Tatis did it the next day. I don't know the score, but you do not fucking steal a bag. When you're up, oh, he stole a third. Yeah, you don't, and especially a third. Like, you don't steal a bag when you're up by six runs. That's padding. Dude, the that's, that's, an, that's an eye guy. Like, what's one what? run going to do? You're already up by six. Like, even when you're down in baseball, if you're down by six runs and you try to steal a bag, Verdugo did it the other day, Yankees, Red Sox, and you get out, like, you're going to get benched for that. Why? If you're one, I got told that when I was in. But you you contradict yourself though because then at the end of the day you also say like the game's not over until the last out right it's not but like that's one that's one run that's one run like you're just still uh, still in that bag is like, for some reason for me that's like showing it up like that's just you like that's even showing up your own teammates like let me get my stolen base right now fuck yeah if you I'm can not. if you can steal that base fuck that why would you not well, it's it's one run, dude. What's that one like? No, oh, what's run one run? The difference maybe to that's winning and second. losing. Like you're not you're not still in home. You're still in second. You're still in third. Like I don't See, I don't dude, like baseball fans are so weird. Where you guys like draw the line? This is what I say. I don't just but unwritten rules. It fucking starts shit. Which well, is you just you just love any confrontation. Okay, you know? The funniest thing is that in real life, you avoid confrontation at all costs, but you love to watch it. I was just about to say that. I'm the most unconfrontational guy who loves confrontation. I was going to say, anytime there's confrontation with you, you do whatever it is possible to not be involved, but you, A, love watching confrontation, and B, love instant. Oh, you stole, A, you stole second base. Fucking congrats. Congrats, bro. You stole second base. You're up six runs. I don't give a fuck, Okay. <laughs> If you hit a home run, that's cool. You hit a home what's run. Your, by the way, Neither. just because we're on this topic, what's your obsession with seeing professional athletes fight or, like, talk shit? It shows passion. 
aggression. It's so like, doesn't, isn't it showing passion that you want to fucking steal that bag and get to home? Dude, listen, pick- if I'm pitching, st- steal it, steal it on me, please. If, and seriously, if I was a pitcher and I, I, if you stole that base on me, I'm literally picking you off and throwing it right at you. You're the most unconfrontational person. You're the most unconfrontational person ever. You're gonna look at him and then look the other way, and you're throw. You're back to throwing me. You can't. You can't tell the difference on a swinging three zero and then stealing a bag. Not a dude. I, I don't draw the line with anything. I think if you're a professional athlete, anything goes, dude. There's no. There's nothing being. I do. I, I do agree with that. Like I love it. Like remember Pete Carroll faked the fucking knee and let Barkley go fucking deep on UCLA. Dude, I don't give a fuck. Score a hundred on. Oh, but I'm going to take me. Oh, dude, if you, <laughs> I, yeah, I guess, I guess, I guess. But at, my, at the end of the day, dude, like, I've always felt this way. College football should always run it up because they get judged off of freaking. Well, that's why, that's why they do, well, the BCS did be, well, when the BCS thing was going because Even they now. judge on that. Yeah. But, dude, at, at the end of the day, we're playing fucking sports. If, if I can score, then stop me, dude. Sorry. Oh, you stole base up eight to two. Congrats. It's a fact. Congrats. But it's funny, though, because it, 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 there's unwritten rules in all sports. Like, we saw it in – remember the Kansas, uh, Kansas State brawl this year? What do you mean? Which one? The college basketball. When he stole the ball late, which is ratty as fuck. When oh, you're, that was when you're ratty. Dribbling, when you're dribbling out, and I'm for sure going to block you and stand over your ass. That, okay, that is the one time. There's unwritten rules in every sport. That's one you don't think. Technically, that is an unwritten rule, but dude, that was a ratty ass move, dude. Yeah, it is when you're dribbling out and you, someone steals it. And then the funny thing is, he stole it, tried to go for a layup, and that guy blocked the shit out of it. Uh, dude, yeah, I guess. Dude, unwritten rules, fuck unwritten rules. If it's a rule, it should be in the fucking rule book. That's the only rules you should abide by. Hey, let the players police the game, dude. Exactly. Brian McCann, Brian McCann is somewhere just pissed off. Oh, yeah. He, he's – fuck that guy. He's not the fucking – That fool probably flew into San Diego or wherever they were fucking playing and fucking was waiting at, in the dugout. Oh, you know he would have stood at home plate fucking waiting to punch him. Literally. Anyways, a good podcast. As of right now, um, who would you have going to the NBA championship? I've watched a lot of NBA games. Um, in the East, my Heat. You're still riding the Heat. I love the Heat, dude. Drawage, fifty fucking years love, old. I fucking love the Heat. Dude. Is Drawage fifty? I don't know. I still remember him when he was like on the Suns, backing up Steve Nash. I fucking love the Heat, dude. Wasn't he on the Spurs too? I don't know. Oh, was he on the Spurs? No, I think Nash got hurt and he came in and dropped forty against the Spurs. Yeah, he ball. I think it was just on the Suns, and then maybe the Heat. And then out west, Clippers, Clippers, Clippers. You trust Paul George? Dude, the guy had one bad game and everyone's going to fucking be up his ass. Like, dude, the guy had one bad game. He's chirping D. Lillard and has no right to. Uh, Didn't they settle that beef, dude? They apparently did and then not in the bubble. Dude, I don't know, man. I just need to go to bed. It's fucking hot in this apartment. Yeah, I know. I got a sweatshirt on. Anyways, good times. 53 strong. Thanks for coming on, dude. Love you, dude. Exit out fast, though. What? Not like last time. Exit out fast. Wait, wait, what were you saying? Nothing, dude. Later. Love you. Later, man. Later. Love you. Wow, did you say love you? Yeah, you said love you. I said it back. Get out. See you. Now it's awkward. awkward. So do you you actually or were you just saying because I said it? No, dude, we did this last time. You sign off, and then I sign, do my sign off. All right. Well, I love you, dude. You're pretty strong, man. Don't say I love you again, dude. We're not here. <laughs> and there you have it. Devin Raw joining the podcast. Thank you all for listening. NBA playoffs, full steam ahead. I'm fired up. Lakers won tonight. It's a 1-1 series. Dallas and Clippers, 1-1 series. I think the Western Conference more competitive than the East, like always. Dodgers won seven straight, then dropped one. Then Clayton Kershaw went into Seattle and struck out 11. He's second all-time in the all-time strikeout list for the Dodgers. Still vintage. Dodgers are rolling. Mookie's still the best player in the game, maybe outside of Mike Trout. But anyways, I hope you guys have a great weekend. You can follow me on Twitter at 10 after 7 or on the Instagram at 10 underscore after underscore 7. Shout out to my pops. It's his birthday today. 
I wouldn't be doing a sports podcast if it wasn't for him. That's how I love sports. He gave me all the knowledge, all the passion I have for this. So happy birthday to him. I'm out. Woo! Go Dodgers.